Hepatic encephalopathy is a decline in brain function that occurs as a result of liver failure. So why does liver failure cause encephalopathy? In healthy subjects, the nitrogen-containing compounds that are generated by gut bacteria are either excreted or transported into the liver via the portal vein, where they are mostly metabolized through the urea cycle. In patients with cirrhosis, however, the hepatocytes are not functioning properly and are less capable of metabolizing the waste products. You may also have shunts forming due to the increase in portal pressure or medically constructed shunts known as tips, which allows blood to move from the portal system into the inferior vena cava. The problem is that this blood still contains the nitrogenous compounds. The most important one of these is ammonia, which is able to cross the blood-brain barrier and is metabolized by astrocytes as they create glutamine from glutamate. The result is that more glutamine production increases the oncotic pressure within the astrocyte, causing it to swell. Other molecules involved in hepatic encephalopathy include mercaptans, short-chain fatty acids, and phenol. Hepatic encephalopathy may occur directly by liver failure, which is more common in acute liver failure, but in chronic liver failure there is typically a triggering factor, which could be excessive nitrogen load, which can come from kidney failure, where patients are unable to excrete nitrogen compounds, and GI bleeding, including from esophageal varices. Excessive protein consumption was previously thought to be a cause, but has since been disproven. Metabolic disturbances, including hyponatremia and hypokalemia, which are both often seen in patients on diuretics, may also be triggers. Drugs, in particular sedatives like benzodiazepines or antipsychotics, may also cause it. Infections can also trigger it, including spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. And finally, we have surgery, including the TIPS procedure. Hepatic encephalopathy has different stages, and according to the West Haven criteria, stage 0 is where there are no obvious changes, only a mild decrease in intellectual ability and coordination. One of the first changes noticed is an inverted sleep-wake cycle. Stage 1 or grade 1 means patients have a lack of awareness, they're often anxious and have a shortened attention span. They also typically have impairments in addition or subtraction. Stage 2 features lethargy, subtle personality changes, inappropriate behaviour and a minimal disorientation in both time and space. Stage 3 is where patients are stuporous but responsive to verbal stimuli, and have gross disorientation. Stage 4 means comatose patients. Other features include asterisks, which are a jerking movement of the limbs, clonus, seizures, and a positive Babinski sign in the later stages. Patients may also have a musty smell on the breath, known as fetor hepaticus. Also remember that patients are likely to show manifestations of the underlying liver disease, which could include ascites, jaundice, and caput medusa, to name a few. Hepatic encephalopathy can only be diagnosed in the presence of confirmed liver disease. There is type A, which is hepatic encephalopathy associated to acute liver failure, type B, which is hepatic encephalopathy associated to portal systemic shunting, and type C, which occurs in patients with cirrhosis. This is subdivided into episodic, persistent and minimal. Overall, the diagnosis is one of exclusion. You must rule out other causes such as bleeding in the brain, seizures, as well as meningitis, encephalitis, Wernicke's encephalopathy and Wilson's disease. Serum ammonia levels are raised in most patients, but not all cases of hyperammonemia are associated with hepatic encephalopathy. On a CT scan, the only change is cerebral edema seen in the fourth stage. Once the diagnosis of encephalopathy is made, then you look further into the underlying causes we mentioned earlier. The treatment depends on the type of hepatic encephalopathy, but generally stages 3 or 4 will need protection of the airway because there is a risk of the airway becoming obstructed due to a lack of the gag reflex. For acute hepatic encephalopathy, or type A, even stages 1 or 2 may require a liver transplant. Type B patients usually will resolve spontaneously or are given medical treatments like lactulose 
and antibiotics like rifaximin or in some cases vancomycin. In type C patients, the management is centered around finding the underlying cause, and this is very commonly due to infection, so empirical antibiotics are started.